Are we live? We good? Cool. We're I like pull my currently channel. highlighted the StreamYard instructions. Maybe want to unhighlight that. Oh. Um, <laughs> there you go. If you want to comment, it'll show up on the screen. <laughs> Let's check to make sure that it works my channel. Okay. Sweet. I'm so professional. Okay, so <laughs> welcome if you're watching this now or later. We're going to talk about Howling Dark, book two of the Sun Eater series. Where's mine? Uh, I know you actually you spent the whole live last time complaining about not having it, and then you're not even holding it up for this. Well, I'm, should we do it like other booktubers that talk about the book and hold it the entire time? So like our entire live stream, we can just hold the book up? I think maybe we take it in shifts. Like while you talk, I'll hold it. While I talk, you okay. <laughs> or whoever's holding the book is talking. No, or that, no. yeah. We're not holding the book up. Or I'm not. You do you. I'm not your boss. All right. So this is going to be... Um, is there any point to doing spoiler-free? I guess we can um, a little bit. I guess, like, yeah, it's a sequel. So It's a really good book. I mean, I feel like it's... <laughs> not tons of people have read it. So, I mean, it's it definitely expands on sort of everything from book one. And I mean, his, his prose continues to be incredible. Mm -hmm. This, this sort of reminded me, cause of course this is inevitable that we're going to mention red rising. <laughs> it reminded me Not of how crazy, how crazy dark age got where it was yeah. like the series wasn't super weird and sci-fi until dark age mm -hmm. and empire of silence, like had a lot more science fiction elements, but this got like real weird. Yeah. And there was a ton of just like, crazy stuff happening and i just the whole time of course because i'm a freak i was just like oh this reminds me of dark age when like weird shit was happening but um, it all i mean it reminded me of golden sun in that course. like darrow having to like finally be in a leadership position properly and having to like deal with people not necessarily buying into the cause and maintaining like loyalty and the mission and and trying to like pump people up for that and have a plan like that yeah, so part I mean, of like hadrian's like journey in this book, I was like, this is Darrow vibes. <laughs> it's great though, because I mean, the so even without spoiling it, I mean, right off the bat, the time jump completely was just like, what is happening? Yeah. I was a little confused because I guess I, I thought it was 45 years. Apparently it's, it's 48 years is the time jump, which it's only 12 for Hadrian because he was in cryo sleep so many, yeah. much. Um, so, I mean, a, a bunch of stuff happened that we just weren't a part of and it's yeah. like <laughs> suddenly you have this character genon and it's just like hey by the way he now has a relationship with this woman and you're supposed to care and i, I didn't but <laughs> i don't know if anybody does but i feel like uh, the fact that it was like just thrown in like that we're like oh he's got a relationship with this person now the fact that it wasn't shown developed i was like this means you don't want me to care this means this yeah. isn't end game because otherwise you would have spent time showing me them meeting and getting to know each other of course i agree so i don't know we'll just spoiler free go read the book if you haven't already it's <laughs> way better than empire of silence and empire of silence. make sure to read empire of silence first <laughs> yes empire of silence was great and this book was even better. And pretty much everybody that has read the series told me that Demon in White is even crazier and even better than Howling Dark. So, right. and we still have two more books to go after that, which is wild. That's like going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can only book keep climbing so far. <laughs> falls off a cliff. Um, okay, so I guess this would assume. So I assume Demon in White then is also going to be a time jump, which we'll see how that goes. But yeah, yeah, I guess then okay. with again that comment, like leaving room for more stories, does has he indicated that he wants to maybe go back and write in some like in-between year novellas or whatever? He probably will. I mean, because even the lesser devil with Crispin's uh story, which I'll probably just read that here soon, that's told from Kristen's POV. Kristen. Crispin. My copy of that was supposed to arrive today, but there was a protest outside my building, so Amazon Sweet. couldn't deliver it. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so that's from Crispin's POV in Empire of Silence when he's in cryo sleep during that. So like that'll fill in what the hell happened, I guess, with his family that whole time. Because that was actually before we even get to this book, that was one of my things where like we talked about in Empire of Silence, where you start out like with Alistair and Crispin and his whole planet and family. And then they're just like never seen again. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in this, in this book, it's even more so like they're so far detached and away from his family that halfway through this book, I was like, I wonder if like his dad knows by now that like Hadrian's alive and 
Or if his dad is even still alive, because it's or, been yeah, like, or if he's his alive. first or PhD is alive. from Empire of Silence after he left home was like 30 years. And yeah. then he spent some 10 years a week in the course of that book. And then now it's been another 48 years. <laughs> You're like, is anyone still alive? <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially even by the end of this, I was like, the, does anyone, like Hadrian's mom seems pretty important at first. Like, is she concerned? <laughs> I, I think, did everyone just kind of accept that he was like dead after he just, his ship went down or whatever in Empire of Silence? Well, I mean, we dead. know his dad, like in Empire of Silence, like signed off on him marrying yeah. what's her face. So like that, at least oh, to that point, him, but... like they're both, alive and aware of each other. But now, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were. Very they possible. Were outraged. She has all of all of the hardbacks. Um, all right, so let's just, I guess, go right from the beginning then. So we all kind of agree that we were confused at the at the start. But then I'm when not you confused, kind of just disoriented. You're like, yeah, oh, that's a what? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I guess this is just a time jump. Let's, let's go with it. Um, but what was cool about, because I'm just, I'm looking at my notes now, so I don't want to forget. Obviously, this this whole premise is trying to get closer to, you know, peace talks with the Cielsen, which that was really cool about this book, where it, it kind of, it seemed like it was setting up to be the whole, like, the Cielsen are misunderstood and they're not actually monsters. Empire fell that way, yeah. And then you really learn in this book that, no, like, they're just terrifying monsters that look at humans as trash and want slaves and they want to kill everybody. Um, and there's, there's no peace to be had. So, I mean, that was, well, that was one of my, one of the things that I loved the best about Howling Dark was it, it, I mean, the way you summarize it is not inaccurate, but just the way that it, it goes about showing and expressing that is so much through like linguistics so much mm -hmm. through like the differences, like the way that Hadrian is like, it doesn't even matter. Like, because these words don't mean the same things. Yeah. Like they're talking past each other. Like it's not even that they disagree. They're not even saying the same they're thing. <laughs> but also cause like the Cielsen just like, don't have words for compromise mm -hmm. or like peace or ceasefire. It's just like, what are you saying? Like, you want us to be equal, like you want us there to be- There are winners and losers. Equal. You are yeah. either a winner or a loser. So if you're saying we're not the winners, therefore we are the losers exactly. and no. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, obviously jumping ahead, but like that whole thing was really, like the whole scene with Hadrian and the translator, that poor little slave girl translator and the C. Elson, that was, that was crazy. Okay. I know Navi, hi Navi. I know she just finished it. Or did you finish it already? I think you finished it, right? Um, but that, that whole scene was tough to read, man. She they like had her teeth sharpened and she was just like fucking miserable because she couldn't even translate half the words that wanted to get translated. And Arenado like slashed her across the belly. It was, God, that whole scene was tough. And then, uh, yeah, that's, well, careful. She copy. says, kill me. You're like, yeah, I, I'm not, not surprised. Yeah. How far are you, Navi? Because... Cause we're going to, we're going to spoil stuff. And I don't want you to get spoiled. Um, but I mean, back to the beginning, what do you think of the whole thing with like the, uh, the painted man? I felt I was still like in the midst of being disoriented. So I was still like, it was interesting, but I was still just like, where, okay. But what the heck is going on? Like, where are we at right now? Like, yeah. So I don't know. Like I, I was still trying to figure out kind of like where we're now we're going with this because I thought where Empire ended, where we were going to start off now. So I was still adjusting to who are even the main characters right now and who are we following? Yeah, I was. I thought he was going to play a bigger. He it it was going to play like a bigger role, I guess, because that the whole like I feel like he died kind of suddenly. Yeah. And, I don't know. Did you care about Gen dying? No. And I then later when it kept being brought up, I was like, oh yeah, that. <laughs> I feel like there's there's a lot of side characters that Gen like, was the cat of this book. <laughs> he was a little bit better than Cat, I guess, but <laughs> I feel like they talked about him dying a lot more. And I was just like, yeah, but I don't know. I he's dead, but Hadrian destroyed the painted man's face. <laughs> just like obliterated him but that was of course leads to you know his little whatever box being taken that kind of leads them to Vorgoso, which i guess is 
good. I mean, that's, but that was, I was making jokes in discord about it because that was like the first time that Hadrian was like captured in this book. And I felt like he kept getting captured in this book by like everybody. Cause he gets captured like four or five times in this book, at least. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps happening. Yeah. Well, he keeps finding himself in the power of like, there's like so many different like agendas going around mm. and Hadrian for all of his machinations seems almost painfully naive to them. And yeah. that's why he keeps getting like caught because like he's, he's just doing his own like peace mission, peace talks, find the seals and make peace that he's like completely blind to the other agendas that are at play. And you're like, okay dude like <laughs> what did you expect Definitely. see now okay what do you think about this so the valka and hadrian dynamic seems unnatural i feel like that's the one that like doesn't seem that unnatural because they're not directly unnatural how like meaning that the love is unbelievable or just generally how they talk to each other or i feel like it's the most believable one and everything else has just been like a sideshow like Kat and Genon was just like, hey, here's his girlfriend that he loves, apparently. And then there's just kind of like <laughs> pushed to the side. And I, I felt like I was just waiting for Valka and him to to just go at it. Cause it was like, there's clearly like it's gonna happen. Hmm. And they just they waited forever to do it, which they finally did it in this book. And I was just like, thank you. Like, Jesus Christ, this, <laughs> this was taking forever. I, guess, like, I just don't feel any like it doesn't feel romantic, I guess. Like yeah. I at no point feel it's not written the way, well, you haven't read Name of the Wind, but it's not like Quoth and Denna where like, it's a very like heavily romantic, like, like wanting to see them and missing them and you, the reader being like, Oh, their love. Like, yeah. it's just not like that at all ever. And I just kind of accept it as a given that like he's into her and she must be aware of it by now. And okay, now they're banging. Like it's almost the way that like romances are in Abercrombie books where I'm just like, yeah, like mm -hmm. go at it, have at, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she does that a lot. She yeah. constantly calls him a barbarian because she thinks they all are. Because I guess they are, which I get. That was kind of like a good, um, not theme, but like something that keeps recurring throughout these books is just like him saying that he's not a soldier when he like absolutely is a soldier, and that came back around like tons of times in this book and of course Valka calling him a barbarian and then him still even being reluctant of her because of like her uh like machinery and stuff that she has or her like ai enhancements because he's basically been like brainwashed that even as much as he hates the chantry that like machinery is terrible and you can't have these like implants but he's willing to do all sorts of other shit and like he was built in a lab and <laughs> he's like a test tube like yeah, well, I mean, I do like when Hadrian kind of uh, ruminates on that, um, like when he thinks about the, uh, what are they called? Starts with an H. Which ones? The things that are made. And he's like, but then again, I was made. The homunculus? So like, huh? Homunculus? Homunculus. Yeah. How many like is kind of like well they're you know made to be serve a certain purpose and blah 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 and he's like well but I mean I was kind of designed as well which is why every time like, a homunculus oh, yeah. interacts with them they're like you're just like me and he's like no I'm not you're a you're built to be a slave and they're like yeah but you're a homunculus too you freak <laughs> like don't talk shit to me when you're the same thing because that's the painted man kept doing that too where he was like we're we're the same and well, also the fact that he's not like, like you. Like one of the things, like in particular, like when he's encountered oh, the girl who ends up not being actually a girl. Um, that was one thing. <laughs> weird. <laughs> but thinking that, like, oh, she's just been programmed to like acquiesce, basically, yeah. and so like it doesn't occur to her to say no or whatever yeah. because that's just how she was designed. And I'm like, you think these thoughts all the time. Why does it never occur to you? that you were made and you don't actually know if what you're thinking is by your choice, if you were designed that way. Like the fact that this is possible and you see it around you all the time and you think about it all the time, it never occurs to you that you might also be There's no like, like operating <laughs> under someone else's plan that it was implanted into you. Yeah, so let, let's talk about that weird scene where the yeah, homunculus comes into, obviously we're jumping around here, but when the homunculus <laughs> <laughs> comes into his room and it's just like this like just turned on wants to bang him 
and he's like totally against it. And then it, it's Karn controlling this body. I'm just like, that's so weird. Dude. <laughs> then again, so weird. as soon as Karn was interested, introduced to the story, I everything was weird. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> that was that was barely that was like the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I mean everything with Forgosos, with Undying, with brother brethren. Like we'll get to all of that, but uh, I'll go ahead and and let the five stars. Yeah, I mean. I rate stuff on Goodreads. It was five stars. Uh, I would yeah. say this is definitely a five star book. Um, since I was listening to so much of this on audio, because I do a lot of like audio and reading, and I don't know if it was just like the speed I was listening to it, but I know that Rockio pronounces it Karn Sagara. But that's not the, how it is on the audio. Hmm. Yeah, that's not how it is on the audio. No, because he says like Sagara. And for whatever reason, the first time I heard it, I just immediately, my brain was like Tom Segura and just like gave, I just joked with myself calling him Tom Segura forever. So every time that Karn was on the page, I was just like fucking Tom Segura doing all this weird shit again. For me, it was that Bassander Lynn, to me, the name sounded like an anagram of Lysander <laughs> and he was kind yeah. of like Lysander in some regards. Like, so I kept just to me, like in my mind, I was like, oh, Lysander. <laughs> There you go. You had Lysander in your book, and I had Tom Segura as the Undying. Exactly. We we both read this, and we know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Bassander, though, so let's see. Like back to the the whole plot with him. How did you feel about like the the reveal towards the end that he had set up the whole like the Empire showing up? I was unsurprised. Yeah. Like it wasn't, I shouldn't say I was like, not so completely. I wasn't just like, well, I saw that coming. It's just like when it happened, I was like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, that makes that checks out. <laughs> so see, Hadrian should have killed him then. He cut off his hand instead and was like, I'm showing mercy. I'm not going to kill you as I escape, which I mean, no one cares about Genon, but yeah, that's when their relationship ended too. But, uh, she can we talk about protagonists cutting hands off and then being betrayed later by the person whose hand they cut off in certain other stories <laughs> he hasn't even read it that's the crazy thing i know they just There's have so a many parallels. okay so here we'll talk about this yes i feel bad for switch too i did it I until read. the end like at first i was the like was really that very last like when he's like that final it's time like, when switch is like please 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 like that hurt it it sucks i do feel bad for him i think we'll see him again at some point in some facet Betraying. But at the same time, it's like, it is sort of that, like, I'm friends with you. I'm sorry, but, like, I can't have you on this ship because now you've endangered literally everybody. So yeah. it's like he had well, to I get go. where Hadrian's coming from, and I don't necessarily think he was wrong yeah. to, like, continue to cut Switch out, but it was still rough. It was. It's it's tough to read because you like Switch. Like that's that's well, why not just because you like Switch, but because you know Hadrian likes Switch, and that yeah. you know that like if circumstances were different, then he they would still be friends. And definitely, yeah. I mean, that, when when that was revealed, I was like, oh, I I thought for sure, I was like, either they're lying or it's not as it sounds. Like Switch probably like accidentally did this or something, and they were just like, nope, he just found the means and just straight up called the Empire. And I was like, that's that's not a good look, man. And then. I was yeah, trying was... to save you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, he was. Hi, Jen. He was trying to save him, but at the same time, it was like, you have no idea what you're doing. Like, you just literally endangered everyone on the ship. Now the Empire controls us. They brought everyone there, and then it led to a, an all-out battle. Like, yeah. Oops. I mean, I feel like at the end, like... I still, I don't think it would have mattered what Switch said. I don't think anything he it could have, have said would have mattered. Been but so it, um, weird. it would have been different because the, the empire wouldn't have shown up. No, but I mean like at the end when he's like begging and pleading with Hadrian mm -hmm. to take him back, like I don't think there's anything like literally anything in the universe that switch could have said to change Hadrian's mind. Nevertheless, I feel like it would have been better and it would have, the separation would have been better if switch had like indicated some realization and remorse over what he'd done, like really being able to see him go like, I realize now and I can never take it back. Yeah. That Rather like I, I see what you mean and that was the wrong thing to do. But yeah. He still insists, I know I was trying to save you. And that's when you're just like Yeah. Mm -mm. Missing the point a little bit. Um 
I mean, it depends on, well, see, so I kind of went back and forth with this as far as like, I was, um, for a while, I was thinking Bassander was just kind of like that crazy Imperial asshole that was just gonna like do whatever he wanted to do to- He's Hux. <laughs> to stop peace from happening because he just wanted war. So I was on like Team C. Elson for a couple minutes. I was like, yeah, just whatever. Hadrian, go join the C. Elson. Like, screw the Empire. Who cares? And then I was just like, oh, the C. Elson are just actually like monsters and you can't compromise with them. You can't negotiate with them. Like, they literally don't understand what you're even trying to do. They think you're like burning. when they're talking, when, when Hadrian is talking to what's her name about the possibility of like a diplomatic posting with the Cielsen, and when Hadrian's reflecting on like, yeah, well, young me would have jumped at that and been like, oh, so cool. I'll just be like among these other people and be learning about them. But like now I've met them and like, oh, uh, no. And you would have been a sharp tooth <laughs> no. slave. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that, well, that also that, that conversation brought up a line too. I don't know if I took it down as a note or not, but he was basically like, he said something as if like had he taken that post they could have avoided yeah like, all kinds of stuff from happening but it's like but even after seeing this now it's like could you have though like he's still writing this after the fact and telling us the story of what happened but, like had he taken that post and been like an envoy or a diplomat for the c elson like would that have even changed anything because well i didn't read that as like if he had made the choice to do that things would have been different i read that as like if circumstances, if like, if things had happened in a way that that would have happened, like if that had been the outcome of this meeting that he had become an envoy and things would have gone down that path instead. Yeah. But like, not just because of his choice, but because of all the events that happened, then that version of events never came to pass. I, that's how I read it as like the version, like an alternate universe where like, that's the path we went down. Not that he made that choice. Gotcha. Yeah, when, when I first read that, it was just, I took it as like he could have taken that post and avoided what ends up being this, you know, crazy war that happens where and which ends with him annihilating the Cielsen one way or another. And had he taken that post, it would have been avoided. But I don't know, maybe I maybe I read it wrong. Who knows? Well, it's uh, another thing too that like I both love and cringe at. Most I mean it's mainly love, but it's like mild cringe every time this series but i mean any series or books that do that where it's like someone from the future telling you their story mm -hmm. and like every so often add in something like and if i had done this then i you know then w the, all this horror that was to come would never have happened like when they just like throw in a little bit of like foreshadowing like that i'm always like ugh. but also now i'm interested <laughs> yeah well i mean i still i still want to see what i need to see the whole like darth vader parallel still because I feel like we get a little bit more of that towards the end of Padme this book. Padme has to die. Exactly. <laughs> but like getting to the to the end of this book, you start to see it a little bit more. But I still don't know exactly what that well, is. Losing a hand was very Vader. True. But he's not Luke. Or did Vader also lose? Oh, yeah. yeah. They both lost the hand. So Hadrian has to have a son and then be Darth Vader and then cut his hand off and then tell him that he's his dad. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, right? but that'll happen in book five. So book three okay. will be Revenge of the Sith. So what's book five gonna be? Attack of the Clones? <laughs> it's gonna be a prequel. Yes. Terrible. No, we'll um, have Revenge of the Sith be book three, and then books four and five will be a new hope and Empire Strikes Back. Whatever you say, Liana. <laughs> whatever you say. But I mean, yeah, I mean, there was hand cut being cut off, yep. and then just thinking about Switch and him. And the betrayal, it's a little, a little shades of like uh, Anakin and, and Obi-Wan when he's like, you yeah. know, you were the chosen, the chosen one. one. <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, quick side note. I don't think I've ever highlighted so many things reading a book. Uh, this is obviously Kindle highlights because I don't, say, <gasps> I don't, I don't write in my books. Um, but just like between things that happened that were sort of like lore and world building that were cool. Like when they, when they steal Tanneran from the ship and then they can't put him in fugue, but they go through the whole process of like draining, they like explain how it happens and like they drain his blood and then like refill it. And they're just they're like all of that, like science stuff was really cool about just like how they even do that and how the C. Elson like bodies can't necessarily handle fugue and they don't even have like 
tanks big enough to hold them. I thought all that was really cool. And we get a lot more of just like what the CLSN are and how long they've been around. And before we even get into like the crazy like brethren and all that stuff, like the Oracle, I just really liked all of the expansion of learning about the CLSN in these different worlds. Cause I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> and I think that he's doing a really good job balancing like learning uh, doing like tech talk but also like culture and like it's not all I just tick tock i was like what <laughs> tech talk uh like there's you know there's you know jargon and invented like you said like about how fugue works and whether and that sales and bodies can or cannot take it and then also then moving into like do they have gender or do they have sexes and like do what we interpret as like gender and sex in their language are is that what that means and like it, the way that it all kind of interconnects where yeah. it, it doesn't really it feels very holistic in that way where it's not like here's all just science stuff like no the science does connect to the culture and connect to the like the biology and the it's all part of the mosaic that is this book <laughs> <laughs> i also love too that uh ever since i mean it was established in book one how melodramatic a character Hadrian is, but like he's so self aware that he is. And I actually highlighted this was what 10% in when he's talking to the painted man. And he's like, Satan had his companions, fellow devils, to admire and encourage him, but you are solitary and aboard. And the painted man goes, Are you always like this? He goes, Melodramatic? Oh, yes. <laughs> Ask anyone <laughs> yeah. who knows me. I, just, yeah, I love I that about his character word. because it's almost as if like every time he goes on one of these like melodramatic speeches or tangents, somebody's just like, Dude, you're being dramatic. He's like, yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> it's it's a thing. Yup. It almost felt like an inside joke between us and the mm -hmm. book in that scene. Because like, I remember it coming up several times in Empire of Silence. And that here, it almost felt like we're like the, or like an inside joke between the reader and Hadrian. We're like, yeah. it's like a wink like to us. Being like, yeah, you guys know. I'm like this all yeah. the time. You can tell. <laughs> well, that's, that's, how, that's what I like too about the, uh, sort of separate from the story, the self awareness saves the cringe. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, each book, like the end paragraph, is always slightly different, but he's warning the reader like, you could stop now. Mm -hmm. You know how this ends. Like, I'm going to be it's the one. Also, that like, when we were talking about like whether or not, you know, this feels like it's influenced or inspired by things, that is a thing that the Book of the New Sun, the, you know, by Gene oh, Wilson. I, I just got those. So I didn't know that. I, I've been told by a lot of people in my Discord that have been reading Book of the New Sun or have read it that there's so many parallels in these books to those. And I actually just bought them and I was getting laughed at because I didn't even look at it when I did it. None of them match. They're all so like Earth, because it's well, just the five, fifth. it's different. But like these two, I know like they both have this version where it kind of matches. Oh, and this, do. I have it. My book just fell. This one, for some reason, when I ordered it on Amazon, it says Tor Essentials on it. Well, they just, it has, is that hardcover? No, this is the paperback, but it's oh, got... Oh, because they the just released... Um, as, they just re-released it as okay. Tor Essentials in hardcover. Well, of course, so you I think the they must have changed. Uh, I have the paperbacks that match your... The match. The, yeah, I have, I have Shadow and Claw in that paperback yeah. as well. But, like, I think now that they re-released it in hardcover, now the paperbacks are matching this? Maybe. Because that's the, their paperback looks like this, right? The paperback looks like this for this one. It yeah. doesn't even exist for this one yet that I've seen. Yeah, so they're the, in oh, in August. They're releasing the hardcover of okay of this. Got gotcha. you. Um, but but I just kind of rolled with it because somebody was like, "It's fitting though, because this series is so wacky and like inconsistent and all over the place that like, why would they be matching anyway?" <laughs> so like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's yeah. the thing, like, because uh, it is, again, like, uh, him from the future telling his own story, and, like, he keeps, you know, at the end of each installment, he says, you know, like, you've walked, you know, this far with me, and if you, mm -hmm. the road ahead is even darker, so if you don't want to go on with me anymore, I totally get that, but, you know, like, <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love that, though, because as soon as I, like, I read it in Empire of Silence, and then when I got to the second book, I was like, he's doing it again, <laughs> but it's, like, slightly different. Yeah, but he's always like warning. So I wonder. So now I'm just wondering, like, at what point are we going to catch up to like where he's at? So like, kind of to this question where he's asking, like, do you think he's in jail or is he like 
in a retreat, I would think that he's kind of at the end of the road. I mean, and it sounds like he's in a pretty okay place when he's yeah. describing like going and helping the like. Who, it sounds like he's like in a monastery. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I, I'm kind of wondering this too, though. Like, is it going to turn out where he's like, are we going to catch up with him and he's like retired, like after Thanos snapped everybody and just like living in peace? And he's like, I I did it. Like, I'm just going to go live my happy life now and tell everyone a story. Or is he like awaiting execution? And at the end of book five, like we catch up to him and he's dead. <laughs> or like, I, I'm wondering if like all five of these books, he's going to be retelling the story or if at some point we're going to like catch up to him and have something afterwards. Cause I don't know where that's going, but. I think we'll catch up to him and then get a little bit of like the present just to kind of like fully catch us up to yeah. like where he is right now. But I don't think any significant, like any significant amount of the plot will be like, after yeah yeah the folio society editions of botanists are gorgeous of what book of the new sun i just called it botanist because i i said the acronym when you said i was i thought you said the botanist as like the a botanist. book and i was like what is the botanist <laughs> botanist book of the new sun got it yeah botanist. the folio editions like i definitely would not say no to those <laughs> if i like the book I'll get those. That that's because people were like, just get the folio society. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to drop two hundred dollars on editions of books that I might hate. Like I like the I've read the first I read Shadow and Claw, but I haven't read Sword and a Citadel yet. Um but also like so I know I like the first two, and I know that it's introduced by Neil Gaiman in the folio edition. And I'm like, You're probably oh, safe. Real bad. <laughs> yeah. The the Tour Essentials one has a nice introduction too though by the, she's like a historian and something. Is that Neil Gaiman? No, it's not. <laughs> but those those are gorgeous. But see, I say that and I just bought the entire Dark Tower eight book set and I've never read a Stephen King book, so. From Folio? No. I was like, wow. No. <laughs> Amazon, it was $100. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's talk back about this book again. Uh, let's see. So where are my notes? Where'd my stuff go? I had all my highlights. Yes. No so cheating. Back to the you should have memorized this for the test. I know. What I like, so I kept highlighting stuff that wasn't even necessarily like in-world spoilers. It was just some of the pros. There and like, were no Kingdom of Heaven quotes in this one, so. There you go. He graduated. There was no <laughs> sequel, that's why. So he, he couldn't that's steal true. any more quotes. Um, I just like some of the, like some of the stuff that he writes that isn't even necessarily to do with the story, I just kept highlighting a lot of stuff of like. Well, see. so one of the things that like uh, I think I mean we kind of talked about this about Empire about like the references to like old Earth, you know, and like it's slightly annoying that like to think that they would still um, at that point in our human history that many about, like Shakespeare and all that stuff. Yeah, that they would still reference like you know Marcus Aurelius. Like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Like, you really would. But I did love the way that he went about describe what. So I was. This was a quote that I had highlighted that I was going to put, but it made it two separate sentences. Oh. Um, but like the, the when he explains what Frankenstein is about, but yeah. he like it, in the words of their current day, so he refers to Victor Frankenstein as a scoliast, yeah, and he refers to the monster as a homunculus, mm -hmm. and like I just I liked that it was done that way because it was just enough of a twist to to be good because it's like why are you still talking about a book that was written in like the fifties. <laughs> when it's yeah, but the way that, yeah. years into the future the way that like because i mean even nowadays when we kind of like casually talk about something like that we use words that are common in, in our vernacular to describe it in a way that mary shelley probably wouldn't have and yeah. like yeah I, that was a plus yeah that was good um but yeah i had highlighted this just because like I, I don't even remember where in the book this was that he said this but it's usually it's either like there were quotes from gibson or just stuff that like he would constantly remember things from Gibson. And it was just like, like just sad as like a big ocean. You can't breathe deep down. You can float in it. You can swim a little, but be careful. Grief is drowning. Grief is deep water. And just like, I'll, I would stop and be like, damn, like, that's just really well worded. And that's, just, I, I get that a lot with him and a lot with Hob. Because there are plenty of times when I was reading Hob and I'm just like, wow, like that's just such a gorgeously written sentence. And you just mm -hmm. kind of have to stop and, and read it again. Oh man, I can't wait for you to read Name of the Wind. You're gonna just highlight the whole book. See, I I had started it like 
a year ago randomly i read like a chapter of it or something and then just read something else i don't know why i definitely do want to read it though but see i've already read this so isn't it just the exact same book yeah but you know it's a different aesthetic so yeah i definitely want to read that and but i'm i'm lying to myself and just saying i'm not going to start it yet because i don't know if doors of stone will ever get written so i don't want to start another series that, you know. Well, I'm, I'm giving myself shit for that because I'm starting a reread of A Song of Ice and Fire <laughs> with you. Yeah. Uh, oh, are and, you? <laughs> and we're probably never going to get the books. Anyway, um, which one? Is Black as Water at Night? Yeah. He, he really is, which it's honestly really impressing. Mm -hmm. Impressing? Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> There's a <the> wordsmith. <laughs> it's impressive that like Empire of Silence was his first... Um, book and then the name of the wind is patrick rothfuss's first book well they're just awesome only written too <laughs> there you go that's true he has streamed a lot in front of cheerio but do so. do we speaking of gibson do you i keep feeling like we're gonna actually see gibson again in some form like in like not just as a memory form, or as a fan like, so okay so the whole thing with him as the quiet like is he the quiet or i was a little i feel like i'm confused as to what exactly happened with okay so let's let's talk about that first of all so the whole war happens like Bassander lynn shows up messes everything up they all go to war arenata you know takes a bunch of captives hadrian takes his son it was his, his kid i don't know Cielsen don't have sexes do they his son child oh, yeah. thing his offspring then, his offspring and then of course arenata again is like back to the the language barrier like doesn't comprehend that they're going to have peace. It was just like, I'm just going to start murdering people. And he, that's when this book got like real dark and twisted when he was like, just he like bit that dude's throat and ripped it out. And then he like killed the captain and like his four little like minions, like that tore her. That biting scene made me very glad this was a book and not a movie. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yeah, that was, that was tough. And then, so of course, Hadrian kills his kid and that just, so everybody starts dying. But you have, you finally Which have- Which Adrian thing. taking his kid also reminded me of Darrow taking Lysander. <laughs> you, you can't help yourself, can you? I can't. <sighs> uh, but so, I mean, it ends up with, you know, Darrow, yep. See, now you have me doing it. <laughs> I have Adrian. never accidentally called Adrian Darrow. <laughs> That's no one well, you just, you just talked about Darrow. <laughs> Adrian, 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 Adrian. Like 1v1 duels Arenata and fucking dies. And then we have the whole scene with the, and we'll, I know we skipped it. We'll go back to the brethren and all the visions and stuff. But like, so he, he dies and then he's talking to Gibson, but he's talking about the quiet. So like, is Gibson the quiet? Like, was he always that? Is I think not that a person? the quiet is using the face of Gibson. Okay. So like the quiet just comes to people and can just be whoever he wants to be. To get his point like, I think the quiet is like kind of this omnipresent kind of thingy and it has to yeah. appear to you in some kind of corporeal form that you can recognize so it shows the face of gibson because if you want hadrian's trust then choose gibson true but so then how does he actually come back to life hadrian doesn't even know i know he doesn't okay that's what i'm asking you do you have the answer? No. We'll see. Okay, so what they did was, <laughs> was like, well, it was I mean, weird, I don't think come back to life, but there's like a duplicate arm. Well, no, it's the other arm. He gets yeah, his right, like, he gets his why? right arm cut off and then decapitated, and then he comes back and he's missing his left arm. Yeah. So like, why? But he was saying there was his arm because they came back with him. There's two of his sword because there was two of his arm. Yeah. So what the fuck is this a multiverse? Like, what's happening? I mean, it was weird enough that he'd come back, but then the fact that there's like a duplication, meaning that this isn't just his one body being mm. now reformed, like something even weirder has happened because we have double arm and double sword. <laughs> right, so, well, so we'll talk about that though. So like the back when we meet brethren, which is, I don't think, I don't know if he described what it looks like necessarily, but it's basically like an abomination of thousands of like human minds Essentially, I pictured it as like a really disgusting version of the Kraken. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good point. But so basically, it it was created by the oh my god, what's the what's the Maricani Maricani I? However you say it. Yeah. And 
Karn had actually like captured it and kept, you know, keeps it basically in the basement of Rogoso's and just uses it. But like that, that whole scene when you start getting all the, yeah, it was very trippy. When you start getting all those like visions and like the big bold text across the pages of like brethren talking to Hadrian and like he sees all these different visions, are those all possible futures? Like, is this gonna do like a multiverse thing? Cause he sees him, like he sees his head get cut off in one of his visions. And then he also sees one of like, he's the emperor and Valka is like his empress. And he sees all these different like variables. But I mean, since we've already seen that he got his head cut off and that was in no way the end of his story, then these might all be part of the same contiguous future. Or it could be different futures though. That's my point. Couldn't it? But I mean, just because he's getting his head cut off in one and he's the emperor in another doesn't, clearly head getting his head cut off is not an end. So oh, it doesn't sure. necessarily mean that it's the different it version was, where he died. He already end. did die. He's still hanging out and telling us about it. So True. Because he's now, he's even less human now. Because Karn, well, again, Karn dies. We don't even necessarily know that he is he. We know that he thinks he is he. That's also a good point. <laughs> and the person who is telling us this story is the person who appeared after this happened. So if the original Hadrian was something or someone else, they are dead and... <laughs> unaware that a but different version of Hadrian who has the same memories is going on as Hadrian and telling the story. Well, so that, that goes back to the whole thing with the Oracle too, though, because that even before we meet brethren, you have the whole scene with the Oracle whose name I forget, but is Jari, that's what it is. Yeah. So when Jari, the Oracle is like looking into his past and future, because I, I wrote this quote down, he's like, freaking out and he's just like what do you mean i don't understand and he's like you're he's like it's your past is broken he's like yeah that all oh, that thing about there's a hole in it um, yeah he's like he said your river he said it said and the the dismembered hands pointed accusing fingers in random directions on the dais beside it your beginning you have no beginning it's like what the hell does that mean so like the his whole timeline is thrown off and then he has all these different visions of what's happening and like dies and then comes back but he's like not exactly the same like different arms are there and there's duplications and like karn dies and then like resurrects as like his two clones so now there's like two karns so there's all kinds of weird shit happening and i mean they basically tell hadrian that they did what they had to to make sure that he arrived in Morgosos, like he did mm -hmm. so why <laughs> prophecy but for what reason yeah like he's i mean as far as we can tell, yeah, he's Palatine, so he's, you know, superior physically than the majority. But other than that, like... He's the gold. Like, who who cares? Like, how is he... What can he possibly do? He's clearly not invincible. He got his head cut off. Like, how is he special? How is yeah. he going to be important or helpful? He's not even very good at convincing people to follow him. Yeah. He's not a very good leader. So, like, why? <laughs> why do you need Hadrian? He seems yeah, pretty... He's important. really not that good at a lot of stuff, is he? I mean, he's he is just, like, another noble. Yeah, he he's another noble with like a really like intense like hero complex. Who's <laughs> like he's just like, really melodramatic. Yeah, but he doesn't seem to be like. There's nothing like innately powerful or clever or important about him to where you'd be like he'd be the weapon that we need. Like no, because he even saw, like he keeps saying he's not a soldier. So like even though he's good in hand to hand combat, like, denial. He even, he even admits though that he's like not the best swordsman either. And yeah, he he's well trained, so he can hold yeah. his own. But like he almost got his ass kicked in book one by what the whatever the priest yeah. or whatever. And then in this one, like with Bassander, I was it was kind of like fluky, right? Like something happens to like give him an edge. Like he probably would have lost that fight too. And then he dies to Arenado. So it's like he's not he doesn't have a good track record for these one on ones. Like he manages to win somehow, but and I mean it is also special. Like when I forget at some point, I think like they ask him about this, like why, like wh what was his, like, what was it so important to him to have to find peace? And it's not even that it really was like, he just kind of like, it was sort of an academic project in his mind yeah. of like, the, well, the scholarly yeah. part of his brain was just like, well, I don't want war anymore. And I want to learn about the CL scene. So like, let's talk. So like in that sense, as a protagonist, like he isn't really like, as like, in terms of his actions, he certainly comes off as very driven, but mm -hmm. really he's not driven by any kind of like great personal quest or desire. It's more like 
he's done this for so long that it's kind of become his quest. But there's nothing about this that he's that personally passionate about. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's a good point. And he even says that when, like, in the very beginning of the book, when everybody around him is like, dude, it's been f- almost 50 years of this. Like, we haven't gotten anywhere. Let's go back to the empire and figure something else out. Like, we're probably just going to have to kill them all. And he's like, we haven't, like, we haven't gone this far for nothing. Like, I'm not turning back now. Like, I've, I've done this for too long. I'm not turning around. It's, it's like more stubbornness than like a is. quest. It's not a great, not a great look to be like, you know what? I've spent so long doing this. Like I have to see it. Through. I think he even tells that to Valka later too. It was just like, I have to keep trying to do this because like, what else is there? It's like, well, uh, kill them all, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. There's a few other options. Yeah. But it's just like, it, it's interesting to like, I feel like the more go-to choice in stories like this is to have a hero. I mean, Darrow has a very personal investment in the kind of, and he gets lost along the way and he gets yeah. confused about who are his allies and who's his identity. But like, nevertheless, like his stake in this game is a very personal one. And he's very mission driven for that reason. But Hadrian is kind of like this rich kid who like stumbled upon a purpose and is mm-hmm. like, well, this is my thing now. And this is going to be my thing forever. How dare you? <laughs> like, you know, Even when everyone around him is like, this really isn't going well. This is not a good idea. Like, like people no. keep dying. <laughs> I'm doing this. I'll kill whoever I have to to get peace. Like, you're either with me or you're my enemy. Yeah, pretty much. Switch. Yeah, Switch is like, I was just trying to help already you. Anakin. Yeah, basically. But I mean, so so how is that going to go? So we take what happened at the end. I mean, the Empire blew up a Cielsen world ship, whatever exactly that means. So I'm assuming just a ton of Cielsen are dead because they had a huge force of people there, which I'm pretty sure Arenata said they were like. And also, the Cielsen, it sounds like, are not as great in number as humanity. Like when no, they learn about the, the number of humans, they're like. Vastly outnumbers them. So it's they're like. They're just not as scary as the Cielsen. Well, when they're all there together, they kind of are. But obviously yeah, not individually. Like A. C. Elson is way more scary oh. than a person because A. C. Elson has like five feet on them, and they're way faster and stronger, and like don't die as easily, and have claws and yeah. teeth. <laughs> they're like gigantic beasts that also use weapons because why not? Like <laughs> when Ar- I think Arenado like has his sword at one point, but he he mentions that it, it basically looks like a shiv or like a knife in his hand because he's so massive, and his sword's just like little itty bitty. Which his sword kept getting taken in this book too. Like Karn took it what? and then Aaron took it's it. It's just kind of useless. <laughs> <laughs> Why is anyone following Adrian? He's really not that good at a lot of stuff, is he? But he's pretty good at speaking their language, but even like even better. Yeah, and again, even towards the end of Howling Dark, he's starting to realize like he doesn't even understand language as well as he thought he did because like <laughs> it's occurring to him that they may not mean these things the way that he thought they meant them. So like this was your one job is to translate. <laughs> this is what you're here for. <laughs> so I'm wondering that like what happens because Demon and White, I've been told, gets way crazier. It's hard uh, to believe. This is pretty freaky crazy. And like pretty like out there and weird. So I'm excited to see that, but also, so like the, the end, so you have, you have the whole battle on Vorgosos, you have pretty much, I guess your like cast of characters are alive. Like Bassander Lynn is alive. Hadrian is alive again. Karn is alive. And now there's- <laughs> Or is he? Everything that happens here on out is just a dream. It's the afterlife. Don't, that would be so dumb. <laughs> That'd be so dumb. But like Valk is there, like Switch is alive, but he's, you know- GTA Right for betrayal. What? I mean, the way that it, things end with Switch, like it's totally set up for him to like come back as like an antagonist. But Switch is, he's just a peasant, like colossal warrior. But he, he calls has the no, right people with the right information. He has no yeah, influence. Bob's your uncle. Because Brethren helped him though. Isn't that what they established? That like it was either Brethren or like Karn's children like helped get that message out because there was no way to get around the like, they basically had like a blockade set up and somebody helped him get that message out. Right. I just mean that like, it doesn't have to be right away, but like basically it's set up to where, because there's been this like falling out between them and switch is no doubt going to feel bitterly about it. He's going to come back and do it in some way because the falling out was so, so rough. But is it going to be like the little, 
like troll character in 300 where he's just like, ah, you didn't let me in the army. So I'm going to go give them the secret passageway. (laughs) You'll be exactly like that. That's how Uh, I picture switch. Is that not how you picture switch? (laughs) Exactly what he looks like. Um, But like it towards the end though, you have like Hadrian basically getting an audience with the emperor and them giving him a, a knighthood, I guess, or he's part of the, he's a Royal Knight. I forget what they're called. It's, some kind of knight of something, but he's like important to the empire now. Yeah. But also it's like, he might not be him because he's all sorts of artificial, whatever, whatever he was rebuilt with. And he's still like, is he still going to try to fight for peace (laughs) in book three? Or is he just going to be like part of the empire and be like, yeah, let's just go kill all these monsters. Well, it also, I mean like a a little bit felt like he's, like falling in love with his own ego towards the end because like yeah. he was like no freaking way he's gonna do any of this stuff like no uh and then he finds out oh the emperor wants to see him and you have this mm-hmm. time like, you can't say no to the emperor and he's yeah. like well I mean I am pretty important so like yeah, right? I guess I should I better do this. Oh man, I'm just I'm wondering like also I want to know who is even on the cover of book three. Like is that just the emperor? Or that would is be it, boring. That would be boring. Because obviously we learned what halfway through this book that it was Karn on the cover of book two. Yeah. Book one was obviously Hadrian, like in his armor. Book three, you have some like redheaded guy wearing white sitting on a throne. So like it seems like that would be the emperor, but unless it's like Hadrian's here. I don't it's not Hadrian. People already told me that have read it that it's not Hadrian, so I know that much. I'm thinking unless it's like Crispin or something like took over for his dad and they meet or I don't know. I'm just throwing shit out there. But then book yeah, four, Crispin, you have to be here, so. well, but we know what Crispin looks like, I guess, from the cover of The Lesser Devil. I mean, do we though? It's kind of a weird picture. Yeah. Let's let's see. But I don't think that like if That's we're going powerful. off the art from The Lesser Devil, I don't think that Crispin's on the cover of Demon and White. No, because because this goober looks like a video game character. And then, yeah, I mean, that's that's got to be the emperor. It's a gigantic throne. Like, yeah, that's got to be so demon in white. I mean, is that literally just the emperor is a demon and Hadrian's going to have to kill him? Wait, he I mean, doesn't what people emperor. are saying about how bizarre and out there the third book is like, that seems like way too normal and like boring a thing for it to be. But but now I'm remembering in part of the the original like sales pitch of this, like he kills the emperor. Isn't that like, isn't that, am I making that up? Isn't that part of like what he does? Oh, you mean like part of his like pitch for his life? Yeah. Like he, the devil that destroyed the sun casually annihilating 4 billion human lives, even the emperor himself against Imperial orders. So he kills and 4 billion humans, including the emperor. So at some point he, but do you think the killing of the emperor would happen in book three when there's five books? I don't know. Book four has a Cielson on the cover, and I don't even know what book five is going to be. But no, I mean that that's got to be like towards the very end because if and if it's called the demon in white, maybe the emperor isn't what the emperor seems, and that's why he kills him. He's a Cielson. Oh, well, that's not where I was going with that. But <laughs> sure. He's Karn Sagara. Is he also wearing one of those like Mission Impossible type of like? <laughs> just rips off the mask. <laughs> well, that's why you were so tall, man. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they have black hair. I, I don't remember what any of them look like. I think Hadrian has dark hair, but doesn't Crispin have red hair? I don't even know. Who the hell is William the Twenty Third? I'm confused. He dropped the sun on the Emperor's head. Yeah, basically. Uh, next book is next year. March, I oh. think. March, yeah. Is that the day that I know they they did the cover reveal on Mike's channel? I don't remember what. Uh, I don't know if there was a release date attached to that or not. It's I pre-ordered it on Amazon. I think it's March. Oh, okay. It's it's July right now, Deanna. <laughs> but I like to know <laughs> that <laughs> we'll have it. I don't even remember what the what's book four called. It is Kingdoms of Death, and it has a C. Elson on the cover. That cover is very scary. <laughs> it is, well, I mean, C. Elson is terrifying. Yeah, but it also looks like a C. Elson. 
on like some kind of chair or something. Like he's part of the Senate. I don't know, he's holding a knife up. Dude looks very regal though in his robes. So King of the C. Elson. <laughs> yeah, it says uh, March 8th as of right now. It'll be here in no time. March, yeah. Um, so I don't know, like, I'm just, I'm trying to think about like where book three even goes from the ending of this though. Like, well, given how well we did at the end of Empire about guessing where Hell and Dark would go. <laughs> to be fair, if anyone guessed half the shit that happened in Howling Dark, they're they're liars. <laughs> because yeah. there is so much weird shit that happens in this book. Uh, so I yeah, I feel like we'll going into the next one, like I don't even want to try to guess what was gonna happen because like I know that I have no idea, especially if people are saying it's even more bonkers. Like, well, I guess we'll just find out. <laughs> Pretty much. And there's and so I feel like I, I don't know if we got some of these answers to to Karn or not. Karn's been alive for fifty. I was about to say we haven't really talked about Karn Segura. <laughs> okay, so Tom Segura has been he's been alive for fifteen thousand years. We already know that he can basically self replicate and stay alive forever. So it's obviously not the original. And he is now two. At yeah, the now same there's time, two, which is terrifying. Which is terrifying. <laughs> um, and he obviously has some kind of powers because, like, when the Cielsen and the Empire show up to have their peace talks and like things are getting heated, he's like, "We are not doing combat here, or I will literally kill everyone in this room." <laughs> like that basically but, ended up happening anyway. So thanks a lot. It but. is. <laughs> <laughs> it is what happened. But um, he was, like, I'm looking at one of these quotes that I had. Why is my phone buzzing so much? Stop it. No one's at my front door. It's 9 o'clock. Who the hell is, so, is somebody yeah, dropping right. something off of my house right now? It's 9 o'clock at night. It's dark as shit Amazon. outside. And there's a delivery truck. It's probably Amazon. Um, he was talking, I think this is, like, when, this is 40% into the book. I think Hadrian was talking to him. And Karn was saying that 500 standard years I've traded with the Cielsen, with Otiolo, mm -hmm. Hesurum, and Dereka. I don't even, Dereka. I see no reason to jeopardize these arrangements in the name of your emperor. Because he's just like, I don't give a shit about you people. Like, mm -hmm. I just kind of do what I want. And he said, he goes, I blinked 500 years is before first contact. So, like, that was first contact with, according to Tanneran, like, yeah. when they had, or... Not even Tanneran, it was the... Who's the Cielsen that he kills in the first book? I forget his name. But he was the first one that said, like, he had spoken to humans before. And this and Karn's been in contact with all these races even before that. So, like, mm -hmm. why, how did Karn even get to this position? And who the, my phone is killing me right now. I know, Amazon... Well, more to the point, what is Karn at this point? He's certainly not human. <laughs> Which again, like the Cielsen in their language, they acknowledge they don't regard him as human. Because he's, I mean, there's no way that he is anymore. He might have been at but some I mean, point. The fact that to them, like to, to a human, we'd be like, no. But like yeah. to the Cielsen, they distinguish him from humans like, yeah. in the way they speak about him, which is also telling. Almost like he's a god in a way. Something higher and superior and different for sure. Mm hmm. Yes, I mean, because Karn doesn't even have, he doesn't care for life at all. He was saying, do so many deaths, or I guess, uh, this is probably Hadrian talking to him, he said, do so many deaths mean so little to you? Yes, Karn said, speaking for the first time without hesitation, we've, when you've seen as many lives as I have, you learn how little they're worth. So, like, is I, I feel like he's talking about that in two ways. One, that he's been around for 15,000 years, so he yeah. obviously has lived... Mm -hmm. many lives himself but also just like see everyone come and go and like yeah. races come up and be destroyed so that's i don't know i'm kind of confused as to like what exactly he he is and how he how the hell vergosos even like stays hidden what the fuck is this i don't know uh, block that user because that's interesting okay <laughs> That was almost as weird as reading this book. <laughs> yeah, that was a little weird. It's a little terrifying. First time I do a live show <laughs> on my channel and somebody's spamming rape in the chat. Okay. Cool. Standard. <laughs> I cool. promise. You can still cool, do cool, live Cool, too. cool, cool. <sighs> I don't know. What what haven't we talked about? Where is this going? I'm I don't know. Let's see. The the very last thing he says, is this it? 
No, this is just one of the ones that, yeah. It's the, the end paragraph. There are endings, reader, and this is one. Ha, it is an ending. Duh. Are Some back. endings are beginnings, such as this. As the phoenix is reborn from the ashes, as new gods are ever born from the bodies, of, and he just talks, talks, talks. And then, of course, hey, he Alex. says, what? Check out the chat. Is it happening again? Why? <laughs> Who does this shit? <laughs> it's a different person, too. Maybe it's... uh. The quiet. I don't think the quiet would spend its time <laughs> talking about. I mean, I don't know why Hadrian's special. I feel like I'm just as special as Hadrian. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See, I, I'm just wondering. I want to see. Obviously, I don't want to rush to it. But like, there's five books. I want to see at what point the whole Vader thing happens. Like, wh what is going to happen between now and then? The question is like how. Are, does he like become Vader, like the final form, like halfway or like, you know, at the midpoint? And then it's like Vader for yeah. the, is it, you know, like if on the five books, like halfway through book three is like halfway, does he like become Vader? And then like the rest is like the and fall of Vader? Ruling the empire as Vader and killing everybody because I want to know why he seriously. Is this like Tornado Creator and his fucking loser Discord like <laughs> spamming this chat? I've right never now? seen this before in my life. Why are there so many of them? I don't know. Like, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, I, I want to know how <laughs> like, killing the CL Center at this point, like, we understand. Book one, I was thinking, okay, the CL Center misunderstood. I thought there was going to be something of like, he's kind of the only one that understands them, but still ends up having to kill them because like the empire just refuses to let go and they just start murdering C. Elson, even though like Hadrian's still trying to work on peace. But now like you clearly see that the C. Elson can't be negotiated with. So like you have to kill them because they think humanity is scum. So like, you know that that's going to happen. And we already know that he does obliterate their entire species, but like, why does he also kill 4 billion people? Is it like collateral damage or collateral damage or like, does he go crazy and just, he takes out the entire empire. Like, I'm just wondering what the hell happens there and what's, what's even going to happen between now and then. Like he's, he's going to be serving well, also like in, in terms of humanity. Like there is like the, you know, the, the people ruled by the Chantry, but there's also people outside of it, people like Volca. So is it that he kills like, could it, I mean, if this is like a Vader Padme situation, like does she get killed by the Chantry in some form and then he obliterates any, every part of humanity that falls under the umbrella of the Chantry? In like, I mean, I guess he could, but also it's like, come on, man. You're gonna like, kill 4 billion people because your girlfriend died. Like, I'm not saying that it happened like exactly like she's dead and instantly he kills her, <laughs> but like, you know, like no. in, in some way yeah. that's like part of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I get what you're saying, because obviously that's not how it happened in Star Wars either. He wasn't just like, ever, just Death Star, just immediately. I mean, a little bit he was. <laughs> is he going to build a Death Star? It, the real question is, is Hadrian going to kill younglings? <laughs> That'll be serious. <laughs> but no, I mean, so we already, we learned that um, the, the like, children of Karn, seriously, these people are fucking losers. Um, <laughs> Stop. How many people do I have to block? It's probably the same person. It probably is, but like an error occurred. What? Why oh, can't I block you? I already blocked you. That's why. Um, is it still in the chat? Because yep. <laughs> I blocked it the first time and now it like won't let me. All right. I'll do anyway. it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry for anybody who's actually like watching and listening that there's a bunch of fucking weirdos in the chat. Um, with clearly nothing better to do on their Friday night, Saturday <laughs> night. It's Saturday. It's not Friday. Um, when Hadrian's talking to Karn's kids, whatever they are, offspring or whatever they are, duplications of him, and they like find that whole like vault of weapons, like the yeah. Americani eye weapons that are basically like but even world, he doesn't know like, like world destroying weapons. And don't they say that even he doesn't really know, like... Karn doesn't even know or... exactly what they are, yeah. So, like, that's... I want to learn more about that, see where the hell that goes, because I 
like that's probably what's going to be. Well, used. I, just, I feel like as much as we saw of Karn, like I still feel like he's an entire entirely like a mystery. Like he's still yeah. an enigma because for every little bit that we did find out about him, there's each thing that we learned about him only meant more questions. Oh yeah, the more you learn, the more questions you have. Yeah. I know a bunch of them on my screen are still like showing yeah, up. Yeah, they're but, on my screen as well. But I, I, as soon as I block the user, it's like not all of the messages are going away right away. And then it just like times out when I try to do it. I don't know. This is weird. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I can time them out. Aha. All right, whatever. This is strange. <sighs> um, anyway, what else do you want to say about this book though? It does. Because I keep blocking them and they keep popping back in. So it's either one person on like a million different usernames or somebody's using a bot to be annoying. But but why? Because people have nothing better to do. Oh, shut the fuck up. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> this took a real weird turn an hour into a stream talking so about Alan weird. Dark. <laughs> What the hell? Luckily, this isn't monetized, so whatever you're trying to do, it doesn't fucking matter anyway. <sighs> well, yeah. Anyway, Howling Dark. <laughs> I feel like there's probably a lot more to talk about. And I'm like blanking <laughs> on things or like I just have so many questions. Yeah, absolutely. Quiet's going to be important because we don't even, I don't understand exactly what the quiet is still. The quiet, but, I mean, it does seem like that's the part of it that feels the most like science fantasy. Oh yeah, um, and like we, it's it's one of those, uh, like, like we the big mystery right in the Empire of Silence um, was you know where's Wargosos and that was kind of solved, but that brings mm -hmm. up new mysteries. But the like background overarching mystery that I don't think we're gonna get answers to until way down the line is the quiet. Oh yeah, or or brethren even like why does mm -hmm. brethren have prophecies? Like why was it prophesied? I feel like it just ties into the quiet. I feel like that's all one mystery. It could be. And the well, biggest mystery of all is why anyone cares about Hadrian. <laughs> why well, anyone needs him. Because he's obviously the chosen one. He has he's to bring, be there. He's there to bring balance to the galaxy. <laughs> but like the the whole between the quiet and brethren, like the visions and all and whatever prophecy exists, like why does it exist? And why Hadrian this far into this world? Because it seems like Karn could accomplish a lot more than Hadrian could. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Thank yeah, wow, thanks a lot. Yes. I I do masturbate, thank you. That's that is in fact true. I, I don't detect any lies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, well, we, we got this, a little bit further into a con talking about the book this time. Let's this progress. better be like a 14 year old that thinks they're funny with their friends. Cause if this is like an adult doing this, it's entirely pathetic that you spend a Saturday like using bots and trolling people on YouTube, like go outside. Uh, <laughs> <Touch anyway. her. laughs> go touch some grass. <laughs> uh, what's the, the whole like brethren calling him half mortal. What's the whole, like what's the, he has a bunch of names that he gets called. Well, I mean, like half mortal, like, I mean, he's clearly not mortal because he got his head cut off and he's still around. So I wouldn't call that mortal. <laughs> but he's also like barely even human anymore because he's all like synthetic material shit now. So I'm wondering, it doesn't seem to yet, but I wonder now if sort of similar to like, um, yeah, true. When um, in, in other books, and I guess this is kind of a spoiler for like, a Song of Ice and Fire, or even if you take like the Game of Thrones show, like when characters are resurrected, they come back as like not shadows of themselves, but like they lose a bit of themselves every time. So mm -hmm. I wonder if like Karn, the way he started 15,000 years ago to Karn now, like how different he is. And well, because we also talk about the fact that like every time he takes on a body, that that mm -hmm. body's like biology is going to affect his brain chemistry and yeah. affect how he thinks. And like, so, like the you do that, that, is going to be it's different. like a, a game of like uh, existence telephone, where like whoever yeah. Karn was, he's like so not that anymore because he's gone through so many iterations of himself that each one is similar to the previous one, but they're so far removed from the original that 
this is clearly not Karn anymore. Well, that's what I'm wondering now too about Hadrian. Like, so he's been dead once now, and now he's back. How much of him will he lose? Or presumably a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like literally his his chemistry is all different now too because he's <laughs> he got rebuilt with whatever parts they put into him. So I don't know. I'm just I, I want answers. And well, I feel like it's also it must be significant that Karn is now not just one but two. It's got to be, but I don't know in what way. Because yeah, they're, they're yeah, going to act different too because of the reasons we were just talking. Mm-hmm. Because like one's a boy and one's a girl. But does that mean that we're going to end up with Karn against Karn because they're going to end up choosing different sides? I don't know. Who knows? Well, that, yeah, that's that's kind of what we're talking about. I don't think it removes tension. Well, one. Obviously, he wasn't going to stay dead, at least in some form, because he's telling the story. So it's like we know he's alive telling us the story. So I, I was never necessarily scared for like him dying and not being part of the story anymore. I think it's more so the second part of that, which is, is he still him? Or like was enough of his conscience basically brought back to where he is still the same person? It's just like now he's in a different vessel, essentially, because the body is kind of dead, but... Which is basically what Karn does with himself. Yeah. So, like, is that the, what happened with Hadrian, or is it some like supernatural resurrection? I don't know. A lot of questions. And I wonder what the hell happens in Demon White because everybody says it's the best one, and it's also the most confusing. So, <laughs> Alan Dark got pretty weird. I don't know. Yep. Again, it's hard to picture it getting crazier, but. I guess it must. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like that means that we have to see more of the quiet and more of Karn. And because those are the pretty, either that or some new element that we've not even heard of yet gets introduced. But like how I want, because they're not going to stay on Virgosos though. So he must, yeah. that, that might. I, like, I think, didn't someone say that like, there's a time jump between all the books. So we're going to jump in time yeah. again. We're going to jump in time again, but all, because I assume he doesn't want to spend a bunch of time, like Hadrian being a knight of the emperor. I'm going to guess they're going to like kind of fly through some of that. But like, if they're not going to be on Vorgosis anymore, they're away from Karn in theory, unless Karn leaves because he's exposed. Or maybe now. one of Karn leaves. Yeah. But like Vorgosis is exposed now. So he can't just like sit there and hide. These fucking losers, I swear. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we were so, going so good there for a second. I just, I don't know because like the quiet seemingly can talk to him wherever. I don't think he has to be like in a particular place. So like those visions and that voice are probably going to follow him wherever. I just, Mm -hmm. I don't know to what end that like, who the hell knows what that means. And like, if the quiet is Mm non-corporeal or are they, is it, or are they non-corporeal? Like why, why would something like that have an agenda at all? But they clearly do. Or how does it even exist in the first place? Yeah. Some, like omniscient being that just for whatever reason picked Hadrian or Hadrian is like the chosen one to destroy the Cielsen and save the galaxy. Like is are is it like the force basically? <laughs> Maybe. It's the literal embodiment of the force. Yeah. In the form of Gibson. I still think we're gonna see Gibson again, like properly. Wouldn't he be dead by now though? I don't like how old was he? And like, what, given how things go, like what if he was put in fugue like all that time ago? Well, he was Palatine, right? I think so. so. Like, would he would he have an extended life? But he was already old at that point, and it's been a long time. Yeah, but, but he could have been in fugue that whole time. Metachlorians, yes, it's all Metachlorians all the way down. Yeah, I don't know. What else, what else do we have to say other than me blocking a million fucking... I mean, it is really distracting. It's hard to think about the book. This is so weird. It really is. I have never, I've, I've never in the history of doing lives ever seen anything like this before. <laughs> I don't know what we did to deserve it. It's not even like there's a lot of people here. There's like someone in particular just like doesn't like you or me and it's just being annoying. Yep. Cool. Um, beginnings in the genre. What 
What do you mean, like stack up against other beginnings? Like do other Star Trek series? Like Empire's Empire House is fantastic. So I thought it was a great start and probably one of the better, like Empire of Silence is probably one of the better book ones to a, a book that I've read because a lot of times, like in a lot of the fantasy and stuff that I read, book one's always pretty weak. It's always very foundational. It's usually a little bit clunky, kind of getting things going. I feel like, dumping. Yeah, but I feel like Empire of Silence handled all that really well mm -hmm. and it didn't feel clunky or anything at, at, at all, honestly. Like, well, for all my I, joking about Hadrian, like, what's the point of him? And he's useless. And why, why does he care about any of this? I feel like Hadrian is still a really compelling character to follow. Yeah. Oh, he definitely is. And we want to see him not succeed necessarily because he apparently kills billions of people and other species. But, like, he's interesting enough that because even, even through Howling Dark, like, he's done some messed up things. Like, obviously, probably the darkest thing that he's done at this point is killing Aeronautas kid but like he kind of had to but like all throughout all of empire of silence i was wondering i was like how is this guy going to turn into what he's apparently going to turn into and even after howling dark i'm still just like he still doesn't seem like he's gonna be that person so a lot has to happen to really turn him to that point or in the or not the turn him but like make like change the context in which we're thinking of these things. You know what I mean? We're like, you can say, oh, he kills an emperor and you're like, oh, that's bad. But then yeah. like when you really oh, see it, like, no I mean, that's what like most Greek tragedy is like where like Greek tragedies will like the chorus, you know, tells you this is the fate that they're all marching towards, but it yeah. never comes about exactly the way that you thought it would. Well, I'm sure it's not going to be straightforward at all. I, I kind of always assumed that it was going to be like out of necessity or this, that's like how the empire portrays him. And it's not like the official story, really. That's just kind of like what the Empire does to to him. But who knows? I could be completely wrong. Well, Maybe and it's also a difference between killing four billion people and intending to kill four billion people. So, like, it yeah. might be that like the results of his actions are that four billion people die. But that doesn't mean that Hadrian is like and like Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the the character. Work, I feel like it depends on the character. Like there's a lot of characters in this that I think are just kind of there. Like a lot of the other Colosso members, I feel like are just there to be part of the team and, and die. Like Gen died and I was like, oh, that's sad, but like whatever. Like his relationship with Kat in book one, I was like, okay, yeah, she like, died. There was a part in, uh, in uh, this book, I think where someone brings up Kat and he's like, how dare you say her name? And I was just like, oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But like people in my Discord were calling me a monster for not caring about Cat dying, and I was like, "Did you really care though?" Because I was just like, "Oh no!" Like anyway, it's. I mean, like it was a significant thing to happen in Hadrian's life, so it's important yeah. to know about it. Yeah, and it, I understand that it affects him. Yeah, exactly. And how he feels about it, but I feel nothing about it. <laughs> and I feel like the scene was done very well, but I just had no attachment to her. So like when Genon and him split up, I was just like, "Yeah, I mean." That makes sense. Here that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because he has to be with Valka. Yeah. He's not I feel like the biggest like relationship thing of all that I felt anything about is him and Switch. Yeah, him and Switch, were, they've always been a good, you know, friendship. I feel like that was one of the stronger relationships is them, you know, coming from different worlds and coming together in the Colosso and then... He's basically his Severo. I know. He's much less crass than Severo, though. Yeah, and obviously, like, Darrow and Severo, like, they almost have fallings out, but, like, not. Severo would never do what Switch did. No. No. And I'm pretty Switch sure he did Darrow. Like, a little bit, like, rogue. Darrow would have killed Severo if he had done that. Yeah. I think. Um, but, I mean, I feel like Valka's a good character. I like mm -hmm. her background. Well, I think she also functions as a good counterpoint to Hadrian because of, like, yeah both the differences like physically and where she comes from, but mm -hmm. just also her like who she is and her outlook and her approach to things is so different from Hadrian. So they work to balance each other out to show us kind of both perspectives on how you could view what's happening. Definitely. Um, I'm some of the Severo is the little wolf kid. <laughs> what? Yes. He's a little wolf boy. Um, <laughs> oh, that's some of the, <laughs> I was going to say some of the villains, but, like, I like the characterization of the Cielsen, like, as far as you can take that. 
Like I thought Tanneran. They aren't just like a faceless, nameless horror. Like they have personality. Yeah, like Tanneran was interesting. Mm -hmm. I forget the one in the in the book one that was getting tortured, but like I felt like he had he he was kind of like the warrior and then died from torture and all that shit that he had to go through. Tanneran was like the scoliest of the C. Elson. Like he was pretty interesting in his own right. And then you have Arenata, who was just like the warlord and. I don't know. I thought those were all done pretty well. Um, so I, overall, I think I kind of like the characterization of a lot of them, to be honest. The I would say the it's not like a huge impact of the story yet, but like any kind of romantic relationship obviously is pretty weak. But I feel like it's intentionally glossed over. It also doesn't feel, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's the point. Like No, it's, it's just kind of like ling- something ling- that he goes it. through. But we're not really there for it. Like, and that's why I didn't feel... Like, I don't, I didn't get enough characterization from Gen or like time with him to really care that he died. Same with Kat, mm-hmm. same with Genon. Like, you can tell me that they've been on this mission for 40 years together. If I didn't see it, I have zero attachment to it. So, like, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff was pretty weak. I feel like Bassander Lin was relative, he's not even a villain necessarily, but I felt like he was done pretty well of like this imposing yeah. imperial officer. And well, all the, all the conflicting, like the the conflicting, not just like bigger agendas from the par- the powers, but just mm-hmm. the individual agendas of like people. His own being agenda, like, yeah. yeah, or not. I mean, like all of them, like Switch being like, "Well, I'm trying to save him, but I'm also scared," mm-hmm. and Cassandra Lynn being like, "Well, I have a mission and I have orders," and like the different ways that people are interpreting their role and what's going on and what their duty is or their duty isn't. Like, I think that's all done really well. Where I, it feels even for characters that aren't that fully fleshed out, it feels really believable the choices they're making for who we seem to know uh, what we seem to know about them. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I think the characters are good. I obviously the world building is incredible because just, I mean, coming up with different languages, this whole race of the CL. The language these, part of it is the thing that's like, it's so really good. stands out for me for this. It's so good. I mean, just the, the world building is fantastic. Um, uh, if you're bad with remembering names. Yeah. Severo is from red rising. He's the little, little demon. They, they is also called the goblin. The goblin. A little trash person. But he's hilarious and amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to book three. People are telling me to read it now, but I'm like, you know what? But I'm I wondering like, if there's going to be any more playing with language. Because like, we we seemed to get kind of misapprehensions about what the Seagelson language is mm-hmm. corrected in this. Where like, all this time we thought Cause like it was, it was already interesting in Empire of Silence, whether you was like, oh, well the feminine pro or the feminine means that, oh, you're the subordinate or whatever. Yeah. And then realizing in this one that there isn't actually mem- feminine or masculine, it's yeah. dominant and subordinate. Mm-hmm. And like, they don't understand peace and like that piece of it. And I'm wondering if there's going to be further revelations of that kind or like further understanding of what the Yeltsin want and think and how they think. Yeah. Because there's, like, questions even about, you know, how do they procreate? (laughs) That's a good point. Because, well, are they all from Aphrodite? Or are they just, like... Possibly. Like, it seems like Hadrian's not sure about that. Or do they just kind of, like, naturally reproduce somehow? I don't even know. Like, it's interesting. But also, like, it seems as if they're they're almost like rudimentary in like their hierarchy because there really is just like whoever's the most dominant person in the room is in charge Mm -hmm. and there's not much more to that but like they seem smarter than that so it's it's kind of i feel like right now it makes me think that like from the out the outside perspective when you don't have the full context it appears to be that rudimentary yeah but I, i mean humans would appear to be that rudimentary if you didn't know either well, especially depending on where you're at in the world and what mm-hmm. you're looking at. <laughs> that well, and that's happen? true. I mean, we've only seen the parts of the Cielsen that are interacting with humans. So, like, Cielsen only meet, like, our warlords. And basically, like, when you're around, like, the army, the soldiers, they also have that mentality of the strongest person in the room is in charge. Like, that's mm-hmm. a very similar thing. So, the fact that we're judging all of Cielsen culture and structure based on who you meet in the combat situations is also probably not an accurate sampling of their their entire people yeah yeah for sure wow this happy stuck to my tooth oh my god (laughs) 
But yeah, I guess uh, Howling Dark or not Howling Dark, Demon in White is going to be bonkers, banana cuckoo crazy. It is, and it's huge too. It's it's like significantly bigger, isn't it? <laughs> they all just get longer. I'm guessing that uh, what is it? The what is the death empire? What's the something about death? <laughs> the fourth one. Yeah. Ah, uh, kingdoms of death. Kingdoms of death, not empires of death. Um. I'm guessing that one will be even longer. Well, Demon of White is like 750 pages or something. Yeah, just under. It's like 746. So it'll be a thousand for Kingdoms of Death. I mean, there's book one, book three. And we also, I mean, based on the fact that the C. Elson or A. C. Elson is on the cover of the fourth one, then I'm assuming that the decimation of the entirety of the C. Elson does not occur until book five. Or it happens in book four. Or in book four, but basically like, definitely not in book three. No. I don't think we're going to get a lot of that until like the very end. We're posting, where are we posting addresses now? I don't know. They're getting more clever. I don't know who lives in at that address, but <laughs> uh, probably no one. Yeah, <laughs> except every Stormlight book is over a thousand pages because it's ridiculous. It's yeah. too much. I too mean, much. the same thing with uh, with Red Rising. I mean, Dark Age was freaking long, and I'm guessing that book six will be even longer because there's way too much to wrap up. That's a whole nother conversation we'll have at some point, I'm sure. Yeah, when the book comes out. <laughs> Because that's that was a huge step up. I mean, I feel like the same thing's gonna happen here though, but there's enough to to explore. I don't know how it's gonna be five books, honestly, from where we're at right now. Hopefully it I don't think it will, but like hopefully it doesn't feel like it's stretched out at any mm -hmm. point since so many well, things so are far it's been paced very well. And if it's it planned to be five, I have some faith. Five is kind of a weird number too for like a series. I don't, yeah. I don't read a lot of five book series. They're either Three or like ten, or like I mean, duologies, trilogies, and sometimes quartets. But once it's longer than four, then you're into like, well, it's ten or whatever. <laughs> Five. Hey, is hey dipshit in the chat. I don't live with that address anymore, but that's cute. So, congratulations. This is my old address. I don't live there anymore. So have fun with that. This is this is such a weird night. <laughs> it really is. This is so strange. But yeah. Hopefully, when we talk about Demon and White on my channel next month, this won't happen. <laughs> Can I get like a fucking bot blocker mod in this chat? Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that like a thing that YouTube would allow me to do? Because this is absurd. I have to manually block this every time. What else? You think we're good for this one? For book <laughs> three? Before I have to fight off more of these dipshits in chat? <laughs> I'm like, I'm honest, like completely honestly, like I'm so derailed by what's been going on that like, it's hard to focus on the book. But the book was basically my main takeaway is it was incredible. It continues to be fascinating. And as bonkers as it is, it isn't the kind of bonkers where, you know, like sometimes like, especially shows I feel like that have been on too long and they keep trying to up the ante and keep trying to make up even weird or something like, and you're like, okay, well, what's the next weird thing going to be? So it doesn't, I mean, maybe by book five, I'll feel that way. But right now I don't, even though it was kind of strange a little bit to begin with an empire of silence and this book just got weirder and weirder. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like, well, what's the next weird thing going to be? Like it's, I was very into it and it feels like w despite all the bizarreness, like yeah. within the context of the story, it does feel believable like oh, it sure. feels like earned. Because there's so much there's so much even set up in empire of silence that like is so mm -hmm. alien to us that we're kind of on the ride for it's like as mm -hmm. you learn more about the cielson and just how big the world is and the fact that like a place like Vorgosos can exist and it's kind of like off the grid and you have karn who's fifteen thousand years old and you have all these like visions and weird sci-fi shit happening it's like and i mean maybe my faith is misplaced but i certainly feel like for everything that's kind of bizarre, it doesn't feel like someone has written in something bizarre and been yeah, like, no, well, it's because magic. Weird. It's because science. And like, I don't need to explain it. It's just weird because of reasons. Like it, everything feels like there is some thought process behind like 
how this fits into the world, how it's meant to function, like what the purpose of this is, where it came from. Like it's it's not just like something weird because. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, Slappy, is there, so the, there's a time jump for book three then, right? Does it start immediately? I don't know how far you are, if, if there is or not, or how long it is. I know somebody earlier said that there is. I'm just wondering how yeah. much of a time jump it is. I mean, I guess you can just like check the first page right now. Yeah. Except it's, if the if I open the book and it's like sixty years later, I'd be like, all right, cool, we're good. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Um, so thanks for those of you humans in chat that were. Yeah. Oh no, time jump again. I thought he someone said no, there was. Time jump. He said there is a there is oh, a time jump. Again. I can read. I promise. <laughs> I heard, I read no, and I read time jump. <laughs> no, no jump. Okay. <laughs> no, there's some words in there. Um, thanks everybody in the chat that, that actually watched and, and enjoyed the conversation and contributed and wasn't just the weird bot posting previous addresses of mine and saying that I fuck kids or whatever you retards are talking about. Um, thank you for all that lovely content in, in my chat. I hope you all have a lovely evening and do something better with your time from now on, <laughs> because that's embarrassing. Um, do you have any closing thoughts, Liana? <laughs> uh, again, my closing thoughts are so far so great, and I'm super pumped to see the bonkersness that promises to be demon and white. Me too. All right, cool. So that will end this live stream until next month, when I guess we'll just jump back to your channel and... See what kind of weirdos show up to that chat. No weirdos, weirdo free zone. <laughs> Might actually have to have some mods next time. And I, apparently this is a thing that happens. So there we go. All right. We're done for this one. Until next time.